Okay, so now I want to talk about current sources. Uh, so that's the other main kind of source besides the voltage source that might be used to power a circuit. And looking at the symbols for current source, um, I use in particular, this is just me, uh, if I want to show a current source, it's, got, it's going to be a rectangle with an arrow inside it if it's a DC current source, if it's a constant current source. It, uh, the, it does not change. Um, the textbooks will typically use this symbol for either DC or AC. Uh, sometimes you will see this uh, kind of current source, which has basically two circles like that with an arrow in it or an arrow possibly beside it, one or the other, but it has to show the direction of the current, just like in the batteries or the voltage sources, we had to show the polarity, which side, which end of the uh, uh, voltage source was positive. Here we have to show which direction the current is actually traveling. This is a symbol that is used um, also in some few places, and uh, to me, it makes no sense. It doesn't give you the direction um, and so I'm, uh, you know, it does get used, so uh, you may see it. If you see it, then you'll know it as a current source. Um, uh, but it's also for DC or AC, either one. So that's, the, that's just basically how the symbols work. The IV curve, the IV curve for a, an ideal current source is for this to be uh, a constant value a constant value. So just like the voltage could have, the voltage source could have voltage when the current was zero, because remember we had a vertical line here and it still stayed at five volts even when the current was zero. Here you can, you can also show a current when the voltage is across the current source is zero and that is exactly what these are showing. We're showing a short circuit um, from one end to the other of the current source. So there can be no voltage across these current sources in this configuration. So we're right at this point right here. Zero volts, but we're still putting out whatever amount of current that uh, is in the current source that the current source is providing. But this is for an ideal current source. And we, of course, in the, you know, like I said before, you can go into a Rite Aid and you can buy a voltage source. You cannot go into a Rite Aid and buy a current source. Um, they, uh, current sources, you can buy them. They are laboratory instruments, basically. The, um, the virtue of a current source uh, is uh, the usefulness uh, for, uh, for you as you go through this uh, at least the early parts of the uh, curriculum here at UCLA is that it's good. It's a good uh, model of uh, how uh, active uh, components work, such as transistors, um, or uh, in particular uh, bipolar junction transistors. You will see current sources uh, in models of bipolar junction transistors. Uh, you will probably run into that in 115A. So anyway, uh, we, this is ideal. Um, and, but what does a non-ideal current source look like? Well, uh, I'll go draw a circuit that shows basically a non-ideal current source. And it would look something like this. So let's say that this is a 10 milliamp current source. So that would be 0.01 amps. And it looks like this. And we show its non-idealness by having a resistor in parallel with the current source. So in the case of the voltage source, the resistor was in series with it. In the case of a current source, the resistor is in parallel with it. And again, this will not be a very good current source. So I'm going to put this value at 1,000 ohms, 1K, 1K. And we have, again, we will show it like this, as we have over here. 
So it's shorted, the 1K is shorted, and so what does that mean? Well, that means that the current going down through this uh, short here is 10 milliamps. All of it will go through this short, rather, and none of it will go through the 1K resistor. Uh, so that is the that would be this point right here. No voltage. 10 milliamps. No problem. But what happens if we so in the voltage source we started with a and that's uh, somehow I lost the uh, lost the a there. Um, the um, uh, we started at infinity, uh, you know, open circuit, infinity ohms. We went down to 1K and then down to 10 ohms. So we're starting at zero. I'm going to take it up to 10 ohms and then on up to, 10, uh, to 1K. And we'll see what happens. So, so what happens is that when we have a, um, a 10 ohm resistor here, a 10 ohm resistor, what would be the current if it's if and so what I will I, I guess I'll just show it as a 10 ohm resistor. Uh, okay, that's going to be confusing. I'm going to erase this line right here, and I'm going to replace it with a 10 ohm resistor at this point. At this point, so this is now 10 ohms. So the current through the 10 ohm resistor will be by the current divider rule. It will be 0 0.01 times 1K over 1K over 1K plus 10, which is, uh, which is about, which is uh, an approximately 9.9 milliamps, milliamps, that's, uh, or another way of writing that would be 0 0.0099 amps. So that would be the current through the 10 ohm resistor, I10. So again, 9.9 uh, .9 versus 10, okay, we've seen a little bit of degradation um, because uh, it turns out that a tenth of a milliamp is actually going through the 1K resistor. Not all of it is going through the 10 ohm resistor anymore, or it never was. Uh, when, the, when it was a short, all 10 milliamps went through the zero ohms, but when it's 10 ohms, not all 10 milliamps goes through it. 9.9 .9 goes through it, and, and uh, one tenth of a milliamp goes through the 1K resistor. Now let's let this um, let's let's let this um, resistor go from 1K to uh, 10 ohms to 1K. Now what is the current? Well, I sub 1K would be 0 0.01 times now over 1K. Uh, of 1K over 1K plus 1K, and that equals um, uh, 5 milliamps or 0 0.005 amps. So now half of the current is going through the 1K load on the, uh, the current source, and the other half is going through this internal amount that is inside the current source, again, that we have no control over. This is part of the current source itself. Part of the current source itself. So we can't control this 1K here. Uh, the only thing we can control is, the, uh, is what we attach to it. And so it's, we're going to lose, uh, if we put a 1K resistor here, we're going to lose the amount of, um, uh, uh, we're going to lose half the current. Uh, and so what does that look like on this thing, on the IV, um, uh, the IV plot? Well, what that means is, first off, if we have 9.9 um, uh, .9 milliamps going through 1K, so that'd be 0 .0099. So we're going to see, what are we going to see? Well, uh, I'm sorry, through, through 10 ohms. So that would be, um, this, is for, this is for 10 ohms. So that would be 0 .099 volts. So it's less than a tenth of a volt, so it would be here.
Okay, so we will have uh, less than a tenth of a volt, and so we'll have points here very close to this point, these points here. Uh, <clears throat> and in the case of the 1K uh, resistance out here, we're going to see um, 5 milliamps times 1,000 ohms, which turns out to be 5 volts, so it'll be out here someplace, and so, and so we're, but we're dropping a lot more current as well, and so this current, this uh, ideal, uh, the real uh, curve looks a lot uh, different from the ideal curve. The, it's actually dropping a little bit as you increase the resistance uh, across the current source um, and increase the voltage across the current source. So basically this is what the, um, the uh, 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 ideal versus the real current source is like. On, and what it looks like on the IV curve. And uh, that's it for the current source. And uh, thank you for watching.